Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're celebrating Independence Day. So happy 4th of July to everybody out there. As I said, today we're celebrating our freedom, our independence from Great Britain and their awful tyranny. Then I thought to myself, I wonder if the young people, the teenagers of today, know exactly what it is that we're celebrating on the 4th of July. So just for kicks, I went online to find a video about this. And I found this video from Campus Reform. And they were interviewing teenagers and young people. And they asked the question about racism in America. And every one of those young people thought that America was built on racism. And they basically agreed with the, the um, critical race theory. Then they, the interviewer asked the question, what does the 4th of July commemorate? And very few knew the answer right off. And those that did stumbled through it. Then he asked a seventh grade government school civics teacher and her friend, a fourth grade elementary government school teacher, what year did we get our independence? Well, the fourth grade elementary school teacher said, 17, but she didn't know the exact date. She said 17 something. And so they went back to the other teenagers that the uh, and, and the young people, and they asked them, what date? And some were saying, 1967. Others were saying, the 1920s. And others said, well, no, I think it's the 1800s. And I believe some of them even said, like, 1980s. And I'm thinking, those are some crazy dates. But they were all blown away when they found out that it was 1776. Then some of them, when asked, thought that America got their independence from America. I was blown away with that answer. But most of them knew who we got our independence from. But then they were asked, what was the name of the war that, that won us our independence? Some said the French Revolution. Others said the Civil War. Some even said World War I or World War II. Clearly, we're doing a really great job at teaching our children hate and racism in our schools. But we're dropping the ball on history and real studies. I want to clarify something really quickly. The colonies had been fed up with Great Britain and their constant and continuous violation of their rights. And they had had enough and they wanted true freedom. So on July the 4th, 70, 1776, in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, 56 men attached their, their signatures to the document that has now become known as the Declaration of Independence, declaring the United States of America independent from Great Britain and establishing the 13 original colonies as its own free and sovereign nation. And I'll be talking a little bit more about our Declaration of Independence Day in today's message entitled Declaration of independence. So would you please turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. It says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offsprings of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will be, you will come free. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So notice, Jesus said in verse 32, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
Truth is a liberator to the enlightened and a hindrance to the enslaved. Truth will set the captives free spiritually, mentally, and physically, but it will enslave those who ignore it. I see more and more kneeling at games and events when the national anthem is played. Right now, Euro 2020 is a soccer cup for European countries. It's being played right now in 2021 because it was postponed because of COVID-19 and, and all of the lockdowns that we had last year. Now, these European countries are playing each other for this prestigious cup. But some of the teams that's representing their home countries, to my dismay, were kneeling during their national anthems. And I want to bring some, some of those countries, like England. England's own fans booed them when they kneeled during their, their, their playing of their national anthem. How pathetic of a team. Wales knelt. Belgium knelt. But there were some teams who did not kneel, and I want to point those teams out. The teams that did not kneel were Hungary, Croatia, Denmark, Russia. The fans in, in, Pitts, in uh, St. Petersburg actually booed the Belgium team who chose to kneel against the Russians, who chose to kneel when playing Finland. And they were booed because they knelt during their national anthem. The Netherlands did not kneel. Austria, they, they knelt during their warm-up game against England, but Austria has not knelt since. North Macedonia did not kneel. Ukraine did not kneel. The Czech Republic, they refused to kneel during their, their World Cup qualifier against Wales, even though they were asked to kneel, they, they refuse and they continue to refuse. Spain, Sweden, Poland. Matter of fact, Poland refused to, to, to kneel when England, playing England, England wanted them to kneel. They refused straight out. Actually, the Polish FA president labeled the gesture as, and I quote, populism that achieved nothing and said, I am absolutely against such actions. Footballers sometimes kneel, and if you ask some of them why they were kneeling, they wouldn't even know, end of quote. Slovakia did not kneel. Portugal did not kneel. France was planning on kneeling, but changed their minds and did not kneel. Even right here in America, our own sports heroes are leading the rebellion against our flag and disrespecting our country by kneeling whenever the national anthem is, is, is played. See, I'm under the impression that if you disrespect the flag and you're supposed to be representing the flag, you should not be allowed to, 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 to represent that flag. But someone say, oh, but Brother Kenny, it's not personal. It's just a statement. But yet it feels personal to me. I spent four years of my life ensuring that other countries respected our flag, respected our way of life. And now our own citizens are disrespecting our flag. And it's not personal. Of course it's personal. You know, while my fellow graduates, they, they started, after graduation, they started their own lives. They, they were out partying and they were out having a good time. I counted it a privilege and an honor to give up four years of my life volunteering to defend our country and our way of life if needed. Now, I must not take that personal. When you disrespect our country and you disrespect our flag, you're disrespecting me. You're, dis you're disrespecting those who served. And even more importantly, you're disrespecting those who died in service to our country and our way of life. 
As for me and my family, we hold three main things in high esteem. First, God, family, and country. Therefore, we don't watch anything that disrespects our God. If it uses the name of our God as a cuss word, we don't watch it. We turn it off. Neither do we watch or participate in anything that disrespects our country or our flag. We don't participate, period. So I say ban the NFL. I say ban the NBA. I say ban soccer. Ban whatever disrespects you and disrespects your, your country and disrespects your God. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. I say find yourself a different name brand shoe to purchase. I want to point something out. I want you to notice something. These countries that, that um, suffered under communism chose not to kneel. Why? Because they understood the cost of freedom. They understood what, or they understand what did it means to live under a tyrannical, merciless, communist government. A government that promised liberty and equality for all, but it was only given to the chosen few. Not all were, were included. Matter of fact, the majority was excluded. So don't believe the lie that everyone will be equal. Look at the facts right now. Are you experiencing equality right now? The rich keep getting richer and the poor keeps getting poorer. No matter the skin color, no matter the nationality, no matter uh, where, where you're from, the poor keeps getting poorer. And the middle class will soon be, be gone completely. It will cease to exist. And I believe that that is their ultimate goal. So someone say, well, what are you on about, Brother Kenny? What are you saying? What I'm saying is you have freedom right now. Do not give it up for some pie in the sky. You are not a part of the elite. You are not a part of them. You are a necessary and sometimes unnecessary inconvenience. Do not give up your freedom. Like someone said, who's going to clean their toilets? If communism and socialism was so great, why did it fall? Why did it fail? So don't be fooled. This whole thing, thing is orchestrated by those who will benefit from socialism and communism. They are using those who will benefit least to do their dirty work. An ingenious plan. I mean, absolutely genius. But let us get back to the Declaration of Independence. In May of 1775, Congress gathered to, to begin the draft of the Declaration of Independence independence with insistence of the colonies for independence from the crown. Apparently, this was a time when our elected members looked out for the well-being of their constituents and the well-being of their country. When the citizens refused to give up their rights and refused to live under a tyrannical oppression, King George declared the colonists rebels. The same thing is happening today. If we do not conform to their ideology, they call us bigots. They call us racists. They call us haters. They call us phobics of all kinds. No one is entitled to his or her own opinion. Otherwise, you are rebels. Like they used to tell us in the army, you don't get paid to think, but I want you to think right now. I want you to think about it. I want you to consider where is the freedom and diversity in not having your own opinion, not being able to choose, not being able to say what you believe in. But you have to agree with everything that they tell us to agree with. Where's the freedom in that? 
Here's another thing I've noticed. When Christian organizations help the poor or feed the hungry or clothe the naked, they, they, and they mention that they're doing it in the name of Jesus and that Jesus loves them. They claim that we're stuffing Christianity down their throats if we just mention the name of Jesus. But if we say that homosexuality is wrong, according to God, the creator, we are homophobic. We are haters. They take popular movie, movie characters and they turn them either homosexual or they turn them bisexual. They teach masturbation and anal sex in our public schools in the name of diversity. And if someone disagrees with, with that lifestyle, they are fired or they are let go. Or some of them are even put in prison in some places and in some countries. But that's not stuffing it down our throats. According to History.com, the Declaration of Independence was the first formal statement by a nation's people asserting their right to choose their own government. Whatever happened to that right? Whatever happened to the right to question? History.com goes on to say, and I quote, few colonists desired complete independence from Great Britain, and those who did, like John Adams, were considered radical. End of quote. Nothing has changed. Those who want freedoms, those who want rights, are still called rebels. Those who point out the inconsistencies and point out the anomalies are called conspiracy theorists. And some of those who bring facts to the table wind up dead and, and ruled or labeled as suicide. I wonder, with the recent death of John Mac McAfee, qualify as one of those voices who were silenced. A man who believed in freedom, who believed in privacy, who believed in decentralization of the currency, promoting given control of the currency back to the people. In other words, he believed in financial freedom from the system that keeps everyone a slave to it. He claimed he had proof that could bring down the government. Then he claimed that he could possibly be killed for his outspokenness uh, about the corruption that's going on. And it would be labeled a suicide. But he stated very firmly, very emphatically, he said he would never commit suicide. He even tattooed it on, uh, on his arm. He tattooed the phrase, whacked. He tattooed that as a reminder that if he was ever found dead, his death would not be a suicide, but murder to silence him. What should we think about all of this stuff? What should we think concerning these troubling incidents? Because he's not the only one. It was no different back at the birth of our nation when people spoke out. As I said, freedom is never free. According to nationalgeographic.org, and I quote, when, when it was talking about the signing of the Declaration of Independence, here's the quote. The mood in the room was far from jubilant. All were aware of the magnitude of what they were undertaking an act of high treason against the British crown that could cost each man his life. Recalling the day many years later, Pennsylvania's Benjamin Rush wrote of the, of the pensive and awful silence which pervaded the house when we were called up, one after another, to the table of the President of Congress to sign what was belie believed by many at that time to be our own death warrants. End of quote. They believed that by signing this Declaration of, of Independence was like signing their own death warrants. But they, they signed it nonetheless because they stood for something. They refused 
to, to, to live under that type of turning. They wanted freedom, real freedom. Edmund Burke hit the nail on the head when he said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing, for good men to remain silent. As I said, there were not many that wanted independence or full independence from Great Britain. But as things began to, to, to become increasingly tyrannical, many conservatives were forced to abandon their hopes of reconciliation in favor of a revolution. Misinformation and confusion uh, permeates or uh, runs rampant in our society today. It, it's like keep the people ignorant and we keep them conquered. That's why Jesus said that the knowledge of the truth will set you free. And Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. They tried to claim that the founding fathers were all Freemasons and godless men. But just take a gander at the Declaration of Independence. I will now want to quote from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. End of quote. Does that sound like a Freemason mindset? No, not really. Or rather, no, not at all. It does not sound like a Freemason. It is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We're talking about freedom, the freedom to choose. The ultimate power does not lie with government, but with the people who has the right to dissolve the government at whatever point it becomes destructive and abusive to the people who actually put them there. Freedom, as I said, is never free. Sometimes it costs you all you have. Listen to this. An estimated 25,000 American soldiers died in the Revolutionary War compared to 40 million military and civilian casualties in World War I, and another 75 million people in World War II. The number of deaths keeps getting higher and higher, more and more. Could it be that war is being used for both a wealth gain and population control? Killing two birds with one stone? But it's only a thought. It's only a thought. Our national debt is estimated at over $28 trillion now. That is estimated to be over $92,000 per U.S. citizen and $158,000 per U.S. taxpayer, according to some websites. The scripture Proverbs 22, verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Why is our government putting us further and further in debt, creating slaves of each and every one of us? Every child is born in debt slavery. But we're definitely not teaching that in our school system. The Declaration of Independence says that 
we have the unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But I ask you, how can slaves pursue happiness if they're so worn out from working so hard, trying to just make a life, trying to make a living, trying to buy food, and, and, and they're being paid a pittance while those who own these corporate corporations and, and, and these um, businesses are, are, are the filthy rich who rule over us. And they're billionaires, multimillionaires. While the working class can hardly feed their families. I submit to you today that the very same grievances that the founding fathers had with the king of England are now present with us here today in our own present governance. We borrow money for our citizens, but other countries wind up with the majority of it. Non-citizens wind up with more than the tax-paying citizens. And yet, we are the ones responsible to pay it back. We're the ones who are, are loaded down with the debt and being enslaved. I believe that it is time for men and women to stand up and declare freedom from the system of this world that are enslaving us. I say enough is enough. We want liberty. We want freedom. We want the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to pursue happiness. So in closing, I want to submit to you that it does not matter your race, your gender, your ethnicity, your religion. The struggles of the oppressed 1776 citizens are similar to the struggles of the 2021 citizens, only that it's increasing in intensity. So let us not forget the sacrifice that others paid for our freedom. Let us not forget the price our men and our women in uniform have made for the right to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. From the Revolutionary War to the current wars that we're fighting right now. Do not forget the price that others paid for your spiritual freedom from the sacrifice that Jesus himself made on the cross to the missionaries like Peter, Paul, and John, and Philip, and others, right down to the missionary who won you and your family to Christ. Do not forget the sacrifice made for your freedom, even if they take away a right to worship. Do not forget the price that, that was paid for you. It will last forever. It will last throughout eternity. The chances of correcting our course are daily ebbing away. Like a stalled ship with a rudder helplessly drifting towards the point of no return, our, our, our society is without a moral compass. It's crippled and at, at best, it's rushing towards the waterfall in a downward plunge into moral decay and slavery, financial slavery. So what is the real truth? What is the real freedom and the real hope? Well, Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the great hope. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the only one able to offer real life real liberty, real freedom, real peace, and joy everlasting, joy unspeakable. So let us this Independence Day rejoice that in spite of the social failings, Jesus never fails, and we are victorious, and we are free in him forever and ever. So the question that I want to ask you today, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Is he your personal Savior? If you don't have the freedom, if you don't have your independence from sin, you can today. Let today, 4th of July, 2021, be your independence day, your spiritual independence from the law of sin. 
All you got to do is to ask. Here, I'll lead you in a prayer. Just follow and pray from your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've given me the opportunity to accept the free gift. Accept, to accept the gift of freedom from the love of sin. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. And help me to live for you the rest of my life. Again, I thank you for this free gift. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I would suggest that you get yourself a Bible, get yourself a highlighter, and you highlight those verses that are meaningful to you. I suggest that you commit them to memory because one day the scriptures will be taken away from us. We won't be able to have the Bible anymore. But you will have his word hidden away in your heart that you might not sin against him. And when the time comes and temptation comes upon you, you can say, it is written because you've had the word hidden away in your heart. The next thing I would like you to do is to Find yourself a Bible-believing church. Not one of those progressive churches, but a Bible-believing church that believes in holiness, that believes in righteousness. And join that church. Be discipled in that church. And become active in that church. So that when Jesus comes back, he can find you doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And that he'll take you then to be with him forever and ever and ever, where there's true freedom, true liberty. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kenny Yates, and this is Hold to Hope. I say God bless you. God bless the United States of America.